So yeah, this shower has already started. You can see an Ada Aquarium meter starting April 15th already, and it runs all the way to May 27th. So even though you can see one in that range, the best time to look is gonna be around May 5th and 6th and in the morning. So I hope everyone out there is a morning person or likes to be up in the middle of the night because that's when you're gonna to need to look. Uh, after midnight and then in the dark hours before dawn, that's the best time to look. Okay, so we've been getting questions from people on Facebook and Instagram who want to watch this shower. And the main thing everyone wants to know is, can I see it? <laughs> can I see the meteor shower? And so the good news on that is yes. Uh, no matter where you are on Earth's globe, uh, you can see the meteor shower. And that's because the radiant point for this shower is on what's called the ecliptic, which is the sun's path across our sky. So we can all see the sun, so we can all see the meteor shower. Um, it's equally good from Earth's southern hemisphere as from Earth's northern hemisphere. And in fact, for the southern hemisphere, it's often the best meteor shower they have every year. Where I live at this time of year, the sun is rising before 6 a.m. So my night sky is shorter. So the farther south you go on the globe, the more hours you get. So you do have a little bit of a better chance to see the meteors if you're farther south on the globe. So like there was someone who wrote from Southern Africa and said, hey, can I see it? You probably have the best chance to see it in fact, better than someone that's up like I'm in Wisconsin. I have to get up pretty early to get the dark skies to see it. But yes, farther south is your favorite, but that doesn't matter because you could see one, you could be north, farther north than me and still see it as long as you have some dark hours still. Right, and, and hours after midnight are the best. So, and there's one more thing that Kelly and I both know that you need for meteor showers, and that is a dark sky. So in the city where it's really lit up, you're not gonna see any meteors. So people do make that mistake. They, they hear a meteor shower and they go outside and look from their backyard or from their back deck. And they're like, wow, no meteor shower. And in fact, the meteor shower may be blasting away with meteors above your head, but you just can't see them because you're standing under city lights. So you do wanna go out in the country, expert on national parks and state parks, right, Kelly? Um, I'm a big fan of national parks. I've been to many of them many times. Um, and if you don't know where a good spot near you is, we have this great page on our website. It's the best places to stargaze. And it's actually our readers submit places that they've been that they think are just amazing dark skies. And it could be a national park or a state park. It could be a campground somewhere. It could be a, a just a, like a picnic table somewhere along the side of the road that they went and they saw maybe a great meteors, or maybe they saw the Northern Lights there. So if you want a little help in finding out where you should go, you should go to that map and, and look around and explore what spots near you are good. Yeah, that's a, it's an amazing resource. It's called Earth Sky's Best Places to Stargaze. And so if you come to our website and you click on the stargazing uh, button, you should get that. And so there's something else about this shower that's really exciting. And that is that in most years, the Lyrid meteor shower in April ends the meteor shower drought, the drought, as we astronomers call it, that happens every year, January, February, March, and for most of April, there are no major meteor showers during that time. Uh, and in most years, the Lyrid meteor shower in April does end the drought. But in this year, there was a moon uh, up in the sky during the Lyrids, but now the Eta Aquarids are here, which follow closely on the heels of the Lyrids. And Kelly, tell us about the moon. Where is it? Yeah, so this is a, a good year for this meteor shower because the new moon, and that's when you don't see the moon because it's so close to the sun, the new moon is on May 8th. In fact, it's the first new moon after the eclipse that we many of us just enjoyed in North America. Um, so when the time's around new moon, you'll only see a little crescent moon and it's only in the sky for a couple of hours. So most of the night sky is dark and that's what you want because the big bright moon washes out other things like little zipping meteors. So this is a really good year for this meteor shower. So uh, we have a question 
that came in from our social media pages. And this one is from Mohammed Imran Salim from Lahore, Pakistan. And he wants to know how can we see it? And so let me answer that because it's, it's meteor watching is really the easiest kind of astronomy you can possibly do. Uh, you just need to be sure you have that dark sky and you do need to stay up late because most meteor showers uh, don't start until around midnight and many are our best in the few hours before dawn. So, but how is the really easy way? So a lot of people will take a blanket to spread on the ground, or if you're really going to get fancy, you might take a, a lawn chair that you can lie back in. So you just want to have some way that you can lie back comfortably and look at as much of the sky as you can. Uh, I've even done that from the hood of a car. So you just lie back. And when you see a meteor, you can shout out meteor. And then the people who are with you can all turn and look at the same thing you're looking at and you can all catch sight of the meteor. So that's, that's, that's a good how. Just lie back, as com make yourself comfortable. You might want to bring along some snacks and maybe a thermos of- As long as you get dark skies, you can, you can see some meteors. You know, you, you might not see a ton. Um, and that's a question that I know that someone else was asking, like, how many meteors will we see? Well, you'll see more if you are out longer, of course, and you have a longer hours of darkness. Um, so up where I am, you'll see, I don't know, you could see 10 maybe or 20 an hour. That's at the peak. But you'll see maybe twice that much if you head farther south. So one thing that Debbie had mentioned before, she talked about the radiant. Now that's a word that we use when we are talking about where these meters seem to emanate or radiate from. So they can be really any part of the sky. You look up and you can see one here, or you can see one there. But if you draw them backwards to where they seem to come from, they this in this particular meteor shower, we didn't name it the, well, I didn't name it, but the Eta Aquarius meteors, they come from the specific name of a star, Eta Aquarii, because when you draw them back, it looks like they're coming from this region of the sky. Now, they're not really coming from this star. We'll talk about that in a second. But that's just where the radiance or where they seem to radiate from. And that's in the constellation Aquarius. Now, Aquarius, I don't know if you know the zodiac constellations, maybe you're saying, I'm an Aquarius. So Aquarius is rising pretty much right before the morning light breaks. So it's not real high in the sky. It would be better. We would see more if it were higher up because then they'd be coming from all over. But now they're mostly coming from out from the horizon. But the great thing about all meteor showers is you don't even have to know that. You don't have to know where they come from because you can just look up and see them. And if you do happen to know that, then that's kind of fun because you can drop back and see, was that an actual Eta Aquarius or was it a sporadic meter? Because we're also just passing through little random bits of dust and rocks all the time. So it could just be a random meteor. Right. And so let's talk about those little bits of ices and dust that the earth is plowing through when we're seeing a meteor shower. So many people know that meteor showers come from comets and the uh, uh, Eta Aquaria shower is really special because, because it comes from the most famous of all comets, which is Comet Halley. So Comet Halley has a 76 year orbit around the sun and it's a famous comet in part because you know, that's about the length of a human lifespan. And so if you're lucky, you can see Halley's Comet twice in your life, but most people only see it once. So the last time it was around was in the 1980s. And did you, did you see it, Kelly? I got to see it. Actually, that's, that's my favorite fun fact about this meteor shower is it's from Comet Halley. And Comet Halley comes every 75 years. So it was 1985, 1986, I was 12. So that means I do have a chance. I'll be 88 in 2061 when it comes back. Um, so I have the chance to see it again. But the funny thing is, is, I didn't see it the first time. I remember very specifically, my mom and I went out to look, but it was low on the horizon. It wasn't that bright. Um, and we didn't go out into the countryside. We had said specifically, oh, we should take our binoculars and go out into the country so we can see it. But we never did that. So I still 
say, you know what, I've seen Comet Haley because I have seen the meteors. And there's two meteor showers that Comet Haley, as it comes through, it comes through in what we call retrograde. So it's all our planets were going the same way around the sun. But Comet Haley is just, it's a little bit of rebel. It's going the other way. So we hit it twice in a year. So we hit it around May. We hit this leftover debris. And again in October for the Orionids. So both of those are chances to see Halley's Comet, or at least parts that it left behind in the orbits, which I think is super cool. That is super cool. And that's that, I, I mean, I was an adult when Halley's Comet came around the first time. In fact, I was working in astronomy by then, so I did get to see it. And in fact, I got to go down to South America to Peru to see it. So that was like a super special, got to see it from Machu Picchu. <laughs> was a super special treat so but i don't think i'm going to be here for the next visit could be wrong it's what is we it, never like know 20 2060 or something like yeah. that that'll be probably probably not but uh, at any rate um so so we've got so we're getting a lot of questions can we see it from oklahoma can the meteor shower can we see the meteor shower from oklahoma can we see it from Florida? Can we see it from Norway? Can we see it from South Africa? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. Everybody can see the meteor shower. The only thing you have to watch out for, as Kelly mentioned, is that in some places uh, the night is getting very short and you've got to have some darkness to see this meteor shower. So we're, we're, you know, we're coming closer and closer now. We're past the March equinox. We're coming closer and closer to the June solstice, which will be the shortest night of the year. And so uh, the amount of nighttime you have on, on wherever you are on the globe is going to make a difference. But, but all of us have an equal chance to see these meteors because the constellation that they're radiating from point is pretty much on the sky's equator. It's above the sky's equator. So, so it's pretty much equally visible from all parts of Earth and, you know, both the northern and southern hemisphere. So, yes, we can see, um, we can see it. And again, the shower started, as Kelly said, on April 15th. We're, that's when we started moving through this debris from Comet Haley. And, and we'll be moving through there until May 27th, but the mornings of May 5th and 6th are the very best times to see it. 